This video is a commentary consisting of my own views and speculations drawn from my research. All footage used in information sources are openly accessible and used for commentary. You're real. Your guilt has become your reason. I hate to see us this. I will come for my you reason. Are because I have a stake in this world, and it's time I started fighting for it. I watched your island burn. Show him your fear! He knows exactly what it's like to lose someone he loves. Isn't that right? Zack Snyder's Justice League finally arrived in all its glory. Some audiences hated the director's previous work, and their negative rating of his work was clouding some of the great stuff he stood a chance of making with this movie. So, fans of the director, himself, and some critics have been campaigning for years, to get this movie released. Eventually that paid off, and March 18, became the day we saw that movie get a release. Here's my review of the film. A couple of opening moments saw the death of Superman when he fought Doomsday in Batman v Superman. When he died, we saw energy cries charge out of him and reach a major part of the Earth. What also happened was the mother boxes being activated which sent the location signal to Steppenwolf of where these energy cubes have been all this time. But this also left Earth vulnerable to attacks, which led to Batman and Diana banding together to find other members to band with them. Batman when we are reintroduced to Batman, he's the one to bring the team together. Now, Bruce Wayne was a useful character in this movie. The most annoying thing is that in the 2017 cut, his character was made to be useless. And for some reason, he just stood somewhere in hiding for the action. In this movie, Zack made sure that we see Bruce Wayne as the most resourceful member of the League. He went to go recruit Arthur Curry and, in that scene, we saw how smart he was, plus he's very multilingual then getting Barry Allen was somehow easier. Also, I can't be the only one who noticed the chemistry between Bruce and Diana. The final scene saw Bruce attempt to do the impossible and he soldiered through. The previous cut made him useless in the final battle, sort of like, Le wasn't lifting any weight. In this particular film, we see him take down the barrier and the first few moments see him all alone doing what he does best. And he made sure that Barry is always protected, he was there for him every second and it is in this movie where we see Barry run fast enough to reverse time. If the rumors of Batman taking on a fatherly figure role to Barry like Iron Man is with Spider-Man, then I truly see this working. One of my issues with the initial cut was also how he was portrayed as an egocentric maniac who doesn't want to work with others. He had plans, but Diana was there coordinating with him too. Cyborg's story. Victor Stone's story in this movie was very important. Understanding him as a human being before the accident happened, his character, why he has this lingering rage towards his dad, and what Dr. Stone had to do to keep him alive, played out. When people say Cyborg was the heart of this movie, they actually meant it. I'll touch on his role more in a separate video because there is a lot to be unpacked there. Retrieving the Mother Box from Themyscira the first time we see Steppenwolf make an entrance was at Themyscira where he was retrieving the first mother box. The action sequence was insane. The Amazonians did everything they can in their power to protect the mother box. When mother box first woke up, we saw the queen get called and the worry of why they box decided to just wake up was making them anxious. When Steppenwolf made an entrance, the energy wave was a lot to handle for everyone in the playing field and they started charging. The fight action inside the cage was longer and showed clear defense techniques and strategies. And when Queen Hippolyta agreed on the cage being sealed, getting out of there, was not even easy. It was a struggle and seeing the women go above, even sacrifice their lives while going above and beyond to get this out of Steppenwolf's reach was done properly this time. Now a moment that blew my mind was when they shot arrows onto Steppenwolf, then attempted to strip him in from different angles. This was so well done and showed the warrior side of the Amazons. This is probably the second best action sequence in the movie after the final battle. The story of the mother boxes. When we got the story of the mother boxes, we witnessed a moment that took place thousands of years ago when Darkseid or Uxus by then, led an attack to Earth and got defeated by the Alliance of Mankind, the Amazons, and the Atlanteans, with assistance from the Old Gods and Green Lantern Yalanga. Pantheon ganging up on Darkseid is very reminiscent of Greek Gods taking down much stronger Titans one by one. Uxus was young in this and still searching for the anti-life equation. 
Now, the most defining moment was Uxus straight up murdering Atlantan with his and then took on Zeus, and when you follow the DC law, Zeus is much more powerful than Superman. But yes, only gods can kill gods. After that, he then took a hit from Ares. Now Ares is an old god, and in his prime, he's much more powerful than Wonder Woman. I may be wrong, but I think Zack stated that there was a planned similar scene for Justice League 2's final battle with the military assisting our heroes. So, one can say the gods that stopped him before, were a representation of heroes that would eventually end him. The dialogue was knitted to perfection. A lot of scenes that were in the 2017 theatrical release were shown in the wrong context, coupled with the wrong score, wobbly editing and this movie fixed all of that. And the dialogue fit the purpose of that particular scene and the intent of the characters. So yes, the actual movie on its own made sense to be that long. The time was used to rehash some of the character members because this was the first time we got to see Barry Allen, Victor Stone, and Arthur Curry on the screen together as part of the storyline. Remember that they were introduced via an email in Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. And there were a lot of people who never liked that, so the director made certain that he is going to show these characters being in their moments. That time was also used for the nightmare scenes, which I'll break down soon, the first one was during Victor's vision. Then there was a dream that Bruce Wayne had on the epilogue. Everything that was included, made sense why they had to be in this film. A lot of Victor Stone scenes were cut from the 2017 release, which makes absolutely no sense because Cyborg is an integral part of the movie. I am though a bit let down by not seeing Martian Manhunter fight with the League, but then it makes sense because they tease towards the end of the movie that they're having room for more superheroes. Final thoughts? The score was so good, the action was there, packed and fully loaded. Our heroes showed up and fought. Steppenwolf was a force to be reckoned with. He had a clear motivation and we got to see that he truly does serve a higher being of power. This movie was really good. A 9.5 out of 10 for me. That's how much I loved and enjoyed it. We need to normalize longer superhero team-up movies so the story can be told without nerfing characters. We are here.